Hi, my crop hunter here and today I'm gonna do something slightly different because one of my viewers wants to know something about my educational background. Uh, he's new to the channel or she uh, and uh, was asking for a video um, about uh, my background and my education and all these things and I said well hmm, that, that, that I, could, I could do that but I mean people are probably not gonna be so interested in it if I'm not gonna talk also about microscopes so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to kind of combine all of these topics together into in, into one video so I'm also gonna talk a little bit about microscopes as well. Well first of all uh, thank you for the question uh, um, and now about my educational background. Well, after I finished high school, I studied uh, research uh, microbiology at a university and uh, I have also got a master's degree in microbiology. As a matter of fact, I even found somewhere on my shelf my master's thesis. It doesn't appear to be very thick, um, but uh, it was actually one and a half years of research, uh, of stand, stand, uh, standing in the lab and, and doing research. Um, and uh, during that time, I basically, my task was to um, identify and characterize uh, bacteria. So uh, that's uh, I'm more into prokaryotes in that sense. And uh, basically what I did is I did some analyt uh, analytical chemistry on the bacteria to find out what bacteria they are. And uh, I also used a microscope, of course, to look at the bacteria. Um, and I used the microscope uh, mainly for two things, to check whether my sample, the, the medium was actually pure. So if there's a mixture of different types of shapes of bacteria, then you know there was some kind of some kind of a contamination in there. If you see different shapes of bacteria in the sample, then you know it's not one type uh, anymore. It's uh, probably a mixture. Something went wrong, then it's contaminated. The second reason, of course, is if you want to characterize a uh, new bacteria, new strains or new species, then you have to um, also document this. Uh, and uh, in this case, you also have to describe the shape of the bacteria. But uh, during my university studies, I have to admit that uh, microscopes did not play such an important role, unfortunately. Already made a video on that, um, that uh, in modern microbiology, it depends on your research question a lot, but at least uh, the, where I've studied uh, while microscopes were um, always a part of, a, yeah, um, of everyday work, but it did not really play such an important role. I mean, um, you basically, we I at least used it mostly for quality checks to see whether uh, the sample that I have, uh, I'm using is still a pure or whether it's actually contaminated. Well, so that's basically between 1992 and 1998, um, I basically uh, yeah, studied uh, microbiology at the University of Vienna in Austria and I graduated with a master's degree. And then afterwards I decided that uh, I did not want to stay in research. I've already had an offer for a PhD thesis, uh, but I declined that and I decided to go into education and I started to work um, as a middle and high school uh, teacher for biology. And uh, during that time, I have to admit, uh, being a teacher, I'm actually, I, th I feel more that I feel more of a biologist than I actually felt during my university studies. It's kind of a little bit strange, uh, but my most of my work that I've done um, at the university was uh, biochemical in nature. Uh, lots of analytical chemistry and so very interesting, no question. Um, but ever since I'm a biology teacher, I feel a little bit more that I'm more back down to the basics uh, of, uh, yeah, of nature observation and things like this. I, I consider this also very important. And this is, of course, a place where microscopes uh, still do play a very significant and important uh, role. Well, and if you want to become a teacher, you also need to have a teaching qualification, a teaching degree. So I obtained my second master degree uh, while I was already working at school. And the second master degree is a teacher's program for biology and for computer science. So I also went back to university to study computer science as well. And uh, one of the reasons, well, I'm going to go talk a little bit about some other things uh, that I encountered during my university time. Um, I remember there was once a, an excursion uh, to a research institute who, uh, who had a, basically they had an electron microscope there. Um, Light microscopes, of course, are all, are all over the place, all over the lab, but the electron microscopes there, there were not so many of them in town. And I once therefore had a good opportunity, uh, the rare opportunity to um, yeah, um, visit uh, the lab with the electron microscope. And I was really eager already to see that because at that time I thought I want to go into ultra structure research. So I already had a vaguely in my mind that I want to specialize um, maybe in ultra structure research because this visual aspect, this was something that kind of fascinated me working with microscopes and electron microscopes. This was kind of the direction that I thought about going. 
that was one direction and the second direction I was considering uh, going was bioinformatics um, or computational biology but um, back in the, in the 1990s uh, this was still such a new field that there were, the university did not offer many courses and many possibilities yet so uh, only years later um, computational biology and bioinformatics started to become more and more popular and there were more uh, courses offered as well but uh, ultra structure research this was one of the things that I was really fascinated and back to the excursion I basically uh, with a group uh, went to the Institute and they had an electron microscope there and I had a long talk with the guy there who was operating the microscope he explained everything and to my surprise he was not so enthusiastic about the whole job that he was doing there not because he didn't like the research or working with the microscope but one of the things that he said is, is it's a very um, exhausting work to sit the whole day from morning to evening behind a television screen at that time we still had television screens to behind a screen uh, to to microscopy um, and everything has to be dark uh, um, so everything was closed window uh, everything was it was dark uh, so that uh and he was also able to see the yeah the, the image properly and there was also um, one of the things that he also mentioned is um, I feel like I'm in, like I'm in an air traffic controller because I'm just sitting behind uh, a screen uh, the, uh, the whole day so it's kind of kind of this kind of turned me off a little bit because uh, I did see that the a working environment was kind of um, yeah artificial in the sense and I don't know yeah uh, which is a pity um, and uh, maybe I should have uh, pushed forward anyway but in order for me to have worked with this uh, electron microscope uh, it would have been necessary for me to pass a an examination a subject which I was not would not have been necessary for me to take um, and I was simply focusing a lot on biochemistry and uh, yeah I don't know I somehow got a little bit off um, of track here and another thing that kind of scared me off a little bit is is, is the anecdote or the story that uh, I was told that one of the students who worked on the electron microscope did something wrong and this resulted in a massive repair cost uh, so I mean of course insurance probably took over that but this kind of scared me as well a little bit uh, that uh, you do something wrong and the microscope the electron microscope breaks and another thing that I kind of turned me off a little bit is, is that I heard that it takes about a week to prepare a sample for um, electron microscopy and the reason is the following if I, have a, I don't know if a sample a specimen I cannot see here and with a light microscope just put it down here and I look at it right but in an electron microscope it has to be completely dry um, that's not a problem but that's not enough uh, you have to place the object into a vacuum chamber first and you have to coat it with a layer of metal because otherwise the specimen is going to burn up uh, by the electrons that are bombarding the specimen so it, it takes uh, quite a bit of time to <laughs> to prepare the specimen as well so um, yeah I was more into nature observation and and seeing movement and color and these things and uh, somehow the electron microscopes uh, they did not really offer uh, this for me so I kind of um, and maybe this also kind of contributed a little bit that I did not wanted to stay in research uh, because yeah um, and the offer for the PhD thesis that I got was uh, also actually more into analytical chemistry um, because I was one of the few people there who finally managed uh, to operate the gas chromatograph this is a yeah, highly specific device uh, used in analytical Analytical chemistry and I was uh, basically working with this thing for weeks and for months and therefore I, I knew how to yeah it was basically my baby so to say this device and the professor saw that and he gave me he offered me a, a PhD thesis and later on of course I realized probably one of the reasons is, is because he himself of course did not know how to operate the device as well uh, because uh, that's why you have uh, PhD students who do that right often it's like this that professors um, yeah they, they somehow over the years they started to in many cases I found they start to lose a little bit of laboratory practice because they're so much uh, involved in teaching and so much involved in, in acquiring the money for the research and, and writing um, yeah, pr research proposals and so on that uh, ultimately many of them ultimately you lose a little bit of the everyday laboratory practice and uh, it appears that this also was the case with this professor who offered me the PhD thesis so I uh, yeah but in any case I declined uh, because I already had other plans and then en I ended up going into education and now my job is to teach students uh, biology and of course also how to use a microscope and in that sense uh, I went somewhat back to the basics 
and I feel like now that I'm even more of a biologist than I was uh, when I still was engaged in the laboratory work. Well, I don't know what else I should say. I think uh, this kind of outlined a little bit my background and I've been a teacher for what? Over 20 years now, 21 years I've been now teaching biology. Wow. Okay, I think that's enough for today. If you have any further questions, of course, please uh, write a comment. Please also consider subscribing to the channel, support the channel. It makes it easier um, for other people who are interested in amateur microscopy to find the channel if there are more people subscribing to it. And yeah, see you around next time. Happy micro hunting. Bye bye.